Hello, and welcome to part two of me creating my Santa's present drop game in Amos. In part one, we looked at the background layer. We learnt about using the Amiga's hardware to produce a nice gradient background, and also using dual playfield so we can separate the background from the foreground. In this video, we're going to concentrate on the foreground. So let's first take a look at the original sprite sheet and have a look at the houses that move on the foreground. So again we can see the houses are made of far too many different shades. If you remember, with dual playfield mode, we can't have any more than 8 colours on screen. So I'm going to convert the picture of all the houses into just 8 colours. Now we could use some clever dithering patterns to simulate more colours, but I've chosen not to in this case. You may be wondering why I've chosen the pink for the background. Once we have this running, I'll change that colour to black. But because we also have a black being used as an outline, I don't want to mix the two up. If you remember from the first video, I talked about using tiles by constantly redrawing what is just out of view. As the pattern of houses in this game is totally random, we need to continuously keep redrawing them. Amos has several tools that allow you to capture parts of an image and store them for later use, but it's far easier for me just to write a short little program to do this capture myself. The first thing we do is load the picture. This is very straightforward, Amos has functions to load IFF files. Each house is a multiple of 16 pixels wide and 128 pixels high, so we can use some simple maths to capture them all. Amos has a system called icons. Simply put, they're a rectangle of graphics that can be pasted anywhere on the screen, and optionally with a transparent background. After this program is run, we save the icons out to a file. We now have a list of these icons in memory. You can imagine these as vertical slices of each house. To be able to use these tiles, it would be handy to have a quick way to look up what tile each house started at and how many tiles it needed, and also what the maximum height of each house is. We'll define an array, which is a bit like an Excel sheet the way we're using it. We have nine different types of houses and three things we want to know about each one. Then for convenience, we'll use the global function to share them between different procedures. If we store some of the basic data about these houses, we can then use that to populate the entire array. Now we'll define a function for scrolling. We'll pass in the number of pixels that we want to scroll, and we'll keep a running total of how many we've scrolled so far. We'll use the screen copy command to shift the content to the left, and then looking at the running total, if we've exposed more than 16 pixels, we need to draw another tile. If we've already rendered the maximum number of tiles for a house, we pick a new random house. Then we just simply draw the tile to the screen. Our main loop looks very simple. We continuously scroll by two pixels and then pause while the screen refreshes. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Great, and a good frame rate too. To help you visualise what's going on, I've temporarily made the view area bigger. And I'll run the program again so you can see. You can see the tiles being drawn into the new area as it becomes available. So we've managed to achieve our target frame rate, but we do still have a big screen copy in there, and I can't help but thinking that might be slowing the process down. So let's remove the weight and see how many frames we could actually render if this ran at full speed. Hmm, I can't help but think we can do better than that. Well actually we can. What if instead of using screen copy to scroll the screen, we actually use the hardware? Ok, this would make things a little bit more complicated, because the position of the off-screen area would be constantly moving, but we can keep track of that. So we'll start by opening a screen much wider to scroll with. It would be nice if we could make the scroll area just 16 pixels wider than what's visible, but because of a bug, that doesn't work. So we make the screen twice as wide, and draw everything twice. This way we can create a seamless loop. Now instead of making the screen 16 pixels wider, we now have to make it 32 pixels wider. This is so the hidden area that we're now redrawing doesn't appear on the left hand side of the screen. Next, we update the code so it uses screen offset and automatically loops round at 320 plus 32 pixels. Then we need to change our calculation for where the right hand edge of the screen actually is. And then finally, draw the tiles as before, but obviously twice like we discussed. So let's take a look at that. Well it looks the same and gives us the same frame rate, so 
So let's again take the weight out and see how fast this actually can run. Wow, that's saving some serious amount of CPU, which gives us more time to do other game logic later on and should help us maintain this frame rate. Based on the minimum size of house, there's a maximum of four possible chimneys on screen at a time. Once drawn to the screen, we don't need to do anything. They'll happily move to the left with the houses. However, later on, we're going to need to see if Santa has crashed into one. To do this, we'll track their position in these arrays. This means that every frame, we need to track the position they are on screen. Next, we need to decide if we want to draw a chimney and what random position within a house we want it to be placed. When we finally come to that point, we'll need to work out what the height of the house is at that point, as we always want the chimney to appear above it. Then we pick a random position based on the available space between the top of the house and the top of the screen. But we leave a little bit of space so Santa can still fit through. Not all the houses have flat roofs, so we account for this. The chimneys are only 128 pixels high. So we check to make sure the bottom of the chimney is still covered up by the house. Now we search in the array for a previous chimney that's already scrolled off screen, and we use that to store the position of our new chimney. And finally, we draw it to the screen. Let's take a look at that. That's perfect. But there's something else that moves right to left on the screen, at the same speed as the houses and chimneys. The various bonuses. And there's three of them. There's the carrot that gives you more time, the glass of sherry that slows the game down, and the mince pie that gives you double points for 10 seconds. We need to incorporate these at the same time. But now we have a new problem. The colours used by these bonuses are not present in our current palette used by the houses, so we're going to have to ever so slightly redesign the houses to incorporate these colours. There we go! Now we take our earlier program that captured the houses to also include these three bonuses. So like with the chimneys, we need to be able to track the position of these bonuses. We'll do that using these arrays. And again, we'll adjust their position as they move across the screen for later collision detection. Now when we come to render a tile, and it's not got a chimney on it, we can have a look and decide if we want to place one of these bonuses. We keep a running count of how many tiles it should be until we place the next one, and when we reach that amount, we pick a new random value. Then we choose a random goodie, and find a vertical position randomly between the top of the house and the top of the screen. And if it fits, we'll try to find an empty place in our array, and if we find it, we'll store it there. Then finally we'll paste it to the screen. Because of this design, we know there'll be nothing else taking up the same square as the bonus. This means later on, if you collect it, all we have to do to remove it from screen is draw over it with the background colour. Let's take a look at this. That's great! I think it's now time to combine this with the background scrolling we produced last time. I'm not going to go through the code of combining the two, because it literally is the two programs put together. However, you can download the code from every single step in the links below. It's looking pretty good, but I think there's one more thing we can add, just a little finishing touch. How about some stars? The background layer has a completely different 8 colour palette, and we're only using three of them. By making the remaining ones different shades of grey, we can create stars with different brightnesses. We simply randomly draw pixels on the background, and then we end up with a rather pleasing effect like this. I think you'll agree that's starting to look like the game. So I think you'll agree we've made some major progress today. Next time we're going to be looking at hardware sprites and actually getting some of the gameplay to work. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving me a like, and also consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll see you next time.